Hey guys, it's Carl. So EDC today, everyday carry, lightweight. I know that it's summertime, things are getting hot, things are getting a bit uh, heated up. And the last thing that you want is carrying around too much gear, too much Cheka in your pockets. No one wants that uh, unnecessary bulge. So I was kind of just uh, brought upon this cool little pack. So this is from uh, Grams 28. It's this ultra lightweight uh, sling shoulder bag. I kind of geek out about these things because uh, it's not too big, it's not too bulky, and it still keeps everything uh, nice and compact. So this is actually made out of this really nice leather. I like leather packs because they're easier to clean compared to nylon, compared to cotton ones. The strap is nice minimal, it's nylon, and once again, in the summer, you don't want anything too big, too bulky, because it just uh, means that you end up sweating more. So you can actually detach these from the back. You can see these nice little attachment points, and if you technically wanted, you could just kind of hold this as its own little um, pouch, kangaroo pouch as it's got this little flap, which I think is super dope. So these are actually magnetic. So there's kind of two ways to get into this pack. On the back, there's this little zipper, which you can keep some essentials. And on the front, it's got that magnetic slot, like I said, which has its own little pouch inside. And on top, it's got another zipper to keep things like keys, nothing that you want to uh, fall out. So it's kind of got three different compartments. And inside, you'll soon see uh, all the stuff that, um, I kind of carry around. And uh, this exact model is the 153 Sling Mini. I know that they've got a bunch of different uh, leather accessories. And on the inside, it's actually got this really nice uh, like felt soft material. So nothing inside of your pack kind of scratches. So the first thing, obviously, you need to carry around is technically like your wallet and your keys. So I usually have these uh, into the back pouch. And the nice thing is uh, this is technically a bit closer to the body. So it's harder for pickpocketers if that's ever on your mind to access them. And since it is the summer, I've been driving uh, my 911 a lot more. It was actually uh, 75 years of Porsche where I went to this event. Got to actually celebrate with my dad, like the OG Porsche guy who got me into the brand. So that was super nice. A little piece of tech that I carry on um, all of my keys are of course just air tags. I kind of keep them on all my essentials just to keep track of things uh, like pieces of luggage, like my keys, because I'm like the worst person uh, to lose them. And I can just quickly check on my iPhone where things are. I can locate them and uh, just remember if you do own them. I've had these actually since day one. I've only had to replace uh, the batteries once. I just go to the dollar store and uh, swap them out every, what, like seven, eight months. So uh, those are pretty handy. And also as a side little note with uh, my GT3, I finally broke like the thousand kilometer mark. So I'm finally uh, breaking it in in close to uh, two years. I barely drive, which is uh, which is sad. I definitely fly a lot more. It's just tough to uh, head to the studio. Link uh, in tow. I'm trying to find a harness for him so he doesn't uh, slide into the front uh, like little footwell. Um, little definition of a first world problems, but uh, trying to drive this a lot more. If you guys want like a recap vid of uh, owning it for two years, let me know. I know that a lot of you uh, love uh, Porsches and obviously that's like my bread and butter. And onto uh, my wallet, once again, another little essential. I'd love to see more cards move onto uh, just my phone. There's things like IDs like here in Ontario, which you still strangely need like the card. I'd love to see that go all digital. But this cool little card that I've actually been carrying around. So this is um, an OVU card. So if you haven't heard about this, this is essentially a smart business card. And uh, whenever I'm in a different location, I was just out in Taipei for Computex, just handing out my info, you can just tap NFC this uh, little handy business card and then all my information appears uh, on their phone, like my social media, like uh, my shipping address, like my email, where vendors or where brands can send it to. And obviously you can set that up um, on your own on the OVU site. So a cool little thing, I think business cards are a bit antiquated and I know that with the new um, iOS feature in iOS 17, like tap to share contact, I don't know if uh, OVU cards will kind of come or become extinct, but kind of cool, dope little tech accessory and always a great little uh, conversation starter. So those are uh, living in the back pocket and in the main pouch, that's usually uh, where your smartphone goes. So I know this is still a toss up, so I'm gonna kind of leave it between the best of the bunch. You're either rocking uh, team iPhone, so iPhone 14 Pro Max, or the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. Both are kind of the best of the bunch. Obviously, if you're sucked into Apple ecosystem, if you're using iMessage, if you're using those AirTags, you kind of want to stick uh, Team iPhone. It still has the best video on a smartphone. Still got to give props to uh, to Android. The S23 Ultra, I've traveled with this a lot. Uh, I went to Manchester United. The Snapdragon chip is, of course, the sponsor of them. Heading to one of their matches uh, in the preseason, um, I think in San Diego, Snapdragon Stadium. I think they're facing like Wrexham FC, so. Ryan Reynolds, fellow Canadian, I'll try to hunt you down. The S23 Ultra has this cool little gaming accessory because obviously you can't fit a dedicated console or switch in this. 
check out this cool thing called the Backbone. This is essentially a mobile gaming controller. It's probably one of the best uh, implementations that I've seen. You can get it for iOS uh, or Android. And with your smartphone, you just need to kind of slot in um, the connector at the bottom. So either USB-C or uh, Lightning. And it kind of holds your controller or holds your phone in place and creates this nice little gaming controller uh, layout. It's pretty much instant plug and play. And the thing about mobile gaming, it just doesn't feel as good pressing buttons or navigating through a screen. Having actual tactile buttons, having buttons that you can actually mash, having triggers that you can shoot with, just elevates the gaming experience so much more. And I know that mobile gaming has just come such a long way. There's even dedicated mobile esports leagues, which is pretty crazy. It's just like the ease of use. Everyone has a smartphone, so everyone can play like a mobile game. And um, just having this like in your pack, whenever you have that extra five, 10 minutes, minutes of downtime, you want to hit um, any sort of mobile game, whether that's uh, Call of Duty Mobile, uh, Rocket League, which I, I'm absolutely trash at. Um, just kind of get a controller, it makes the experience so much better, so much cooler. And like I said, the backbone is one of the sleekest that I've seen. Highly, highly recommended. Next off, uh, inside of the little uh, pack, I can never get away from traveling with cameras. Obviously nothing uh, full frame or nothing large like we have here, but this is the Insta360 X3. It's essentially a 360 degree camera if you haven't seen one before. This thing is super small, super compact. It's actually replaced all of my GoPros. I actually prefer them as you have the option to record in 360, you can control everything actually through the app, which is pretty uh, simple to use. You can also have a regular landscape or portrait shot, but because the camera has a quarter inch connector, you can connect it to pretty much any camera accessory. So I've actually got this uh, super large pole. I'm building this little uh, deck out here. So I could technically, if we want, mount this to the top of here and record things like time lapses in my studio, 360 degree footage. And I actually had this mounted to uh, my 911 when I went out uh, for that Porsche 75 year uh, anniversary event, had this just recording uh, some footage around. So super versatile. It's one of the best 360 cameras that uh, I've actually used. It's small, it's compact, it fits into the lightweight EDC. It doesn't feel like you're carrying around uh, a dedicated extra camera and it can even fit into that pocket. Um, if you just want a little bit of bulge. It also charges via USB-C, which is kind of the segue into the next item. Obviously we're traveling around with a lot of tech, but you gotta keep that juiced up. So this is just a simple power bank from Balkan. This little guy has probably lived in my EDC the longest. And the reason why I kind of stuck to this one, so I don't have to carry around extra cables. It has lightning for my iPhone or for your team iOS or USB-C for most of the other uh, accessories built into these little wires. This thing is super handy. It saved my life a bunch of times as I'm technically always uh, on my gadgets or wherever I travel to. I don't have that time to head back to a dedicated spot to charge up my gear. Just charging it uh, on the go is always super clutch. Next off uh, for audio, especially in the summer, I try to stay away from over the ear cans because they're too big, they're bulky. I actually kind of sweat a lot because it's technically uh, too hot. So these are the Beats Studio Buds Plus. Uh, obviously Beats is uh, owned by Apple, but these are in the slickest, transparent colorway, like super retro, very like 90s inspired. And I actually like the form factor versus uh, AirPods because they don't have the stems. These are active noise canceling. I'd say they sound very similar to uh, AirPod Pros. And uh, on the flip side, they do charge via USB-C, but I guess on the flip side, uh, since there isn't anything on the back, these cannot uh, charge wirelessly. So kind of pros and cons of each. And uh, the main reason I use them is honestly for the dope colorway, like transparent tech. There needs to be more of that stuff. And kind of last but not least, uh, cramming into here, technically not really tech related, but uh, part of my everyday carry, especially uh, in the summer, I always just try to rock shades uh, just cause it's so bright outside and I can hide the uh, the always tired eyes. So I know a lot of you actually asked about these sunnies. I was rocking them uh, last week at the Montreal Grand Prix. These are just a simple pair of Ray-Bans. I'll kind of leave the, uh, the code or the, uh, I guess, description of these. I'm not really too sure what model it is, but, uh, I like them. They're kind of like a neutral beige. They pretty much go with everything. Uh, I'm not too much of a fashionista, but I think uh, they look pretty slick. And funnily enough, uh, Ray-Ban is a sponsor Ferrari on all of their cars. So I felt uh, right at home at um, F1. And of course some chapstick, literally from the dollar store, whatever I can find just to keep uh, the lips unchapped. And uh, that kind of concludes my little EDC for the summer, super lightweight, super compact. You can actually just probably put these in a little sleeve so they don't get scratched, but uh, 
all the tech, all of the little stuff just fits into uh, this pack. It's just nice that this um, kind of flips shut magnetically and once this is slung over the shoulder, you can choose to uh, tighten this so you can have this kind of rocked uh, a bit more hype beastie closer to the chest if you want or uh, just kind of over the shoulder off to the side, kind of whatever your jam is. So I hope you guys enjoy this episode. Remember everything uh, listed uh, will be down below and how do you guys rock your EDCs? Hopefully you guys are enjoying the summer. I know that it's warm. It's uh, brief, especially if you're um, in like the Northeast. So go out and enjoy it and I'll catch the rest of you in one of my next episodes. Peace.